All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Complexity Casting presents the Sound Blaster Heroes League qualifier number two going on this week. One of the teams playing in this week's qualifier is going to be walking away with five Z Series sound cards, courtesy of Sound Blaster, and of course, the invitation into the 16 man playoff bracket for the $40,000 Sound Blaster Heroes League playoffs going on at the end of February. So guys, a very, very important qualifier going on this week. And well, Druids looking one of the fa looking to be one of the favored teams to actually win this entire thing. We saw them yesterday going up against number 24 ranked on team Iso Palette and uh, looking pretty good over them. The other main teams that uh, did in fact uh, sign up, I, I know that FYKU, one of the teams that's been hanging out up there in the diamond bracket, unfortunately, they had to forfeit their match and. Well, Druids is one of the teams that could very, very well be making their way up there. Of course, finished up recently in the top eight of Diamond number three. So, not bad for them at all. Today, they're going to be taking on Oloy. Of course, reverse, that's YOLO. As you can see, their image over here <laughs> is YOLO. So, that's what I'm going to be calling their team name. And uh, don't really know a whole lot about these guys. Kind of just did a little bit of research and couldn't really find a whole lot. It looks like they're... Uh, some lower tier players that are just interested in playing competitively and well run it into n9 formerly known as druids here in the second round not exactly where you want to be but we'll see if they can give us a good game let's get right on into it legion team choosing to blind ban out ophelia and tempest do not want to get hit with that big elemental void or give up an ophelia to a surprise ophelia player there on the other team so Pew does choose to get rid of those two. Parasite and Pebbles, the blind bands, though, for the Hellborn side, saying, hey, you're not getting that Parasite Pew. The Pew site is kind of strong. He uh, does pretty well with that hero most of the time. And then Karma Diaz Pebbles, pretty well known as well. So let's get into the lock picking phase. First up, we had the lock of Engineer from Pew, followed by Shadowblade Drunken Master from YOLO. So already you can tell that this is going to be an interesting game. Um, Fade Myrmidon comes out of N9. They've shown a lot of preference for that Myrmidon pick in their past few games. And YOLO finishes it out with Scout. So going with Shadowblade Drunken Master Scout as their locks, going to be some very, very interesting strategies going on here so i'm excited to see how this one pans out getting into the banning phase pew choosing to ban out some pretty standard heroes keeper of the forest war beast some strong passive junglers with a lot of pushing potential there and then jerezaya just does not want to have to deal with that protective charm the soul's bulwark or the soul's blessing so so powerful and just says nope not gonna happen not today yolo being led by ma over there does choose to ban out Silhouette, Dark Lady, and Plague Rider. So getting rid of a strong suicide. And then a couple of great carries. Carry left on the board, though. The Dragon is still up there. And we'll see if either of these teams do choose to pick that one up. But other than that, I mean, a lot of the carry potential removed. Moon Queen is there as well. So actually, N9 will probably either pick up Moon Queen or Wretched Hag here. Um, Moon Queen, Wretched Hag, or Draconis will be one of their next two picks right now, I would think. But we'll see. Wild Soul is the first pick for Pew, going with the Great Suicide. And uh, we'll see how good Zintz is at playing that hero. Might be going to a different player as well. I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, okay, I was wrong. I need to stop taking guesses. Picks number four and five over there for N9. They do go with Zephyr Torture. So, very much so deviating from uh, what I've seen them run in the past. They will most likely follow up with a Myrmidon pick. Engineer is uh, a possibility as well. If they can somehow get both of those heroes, that would be a very good way to round out their team. But YOLO on the other side, they go with Dement Shaman and then a Magmus. Magmus, of course, has the awesome initiation potential. And uh, right there, that's a decent middle lineup. We'll see if uh, Demented Shaman might actually get run as a solo or a carry, perhaps. But uh, we shall see indeed. So they are going to be picking right now, and Bubbles is what they end up with, the uh, suicide hero right there. We'll see if anybody plays a real strong Bubbles on the YOLO team. I looked these guys up in terms of MMR, and they're all uh, high 1700s, I believe. It was 
high 1700s. I think there was one guy in the mid 1800s. So not bad players by any means. And uh, we'll see how well they can actually compete against N9. As uh, Fade is the first pick out of the lock pool here. Going to be played most likely by Brodex level 5 or maybe Zintz. Karma Diaz is also a possibility there. I, uh, I think it actually will be Karma Diaz or Zintz. As Engineer Myrmidon is the pick here from YOLO. Uh, going to leave some very odd final heroes for N9. And yeah, Pew says it right there best. Annoying. They're going to have to run a support sure. They might even have to run a secondary support fade. Um, and then Pew actually readies up on Drunken Master. So normally the, the support player here going to be pulling out the Drunken Master. Interesting, interesting, guys. So pretty dang cool lineup here. Four and nine. They do end up with Drunken Master, Fade, Torture, Zephyr, and Wild Soul. The first four heroes, there are a lot of aggressive potential, and I'm excited to see how exactly this is played out. Indeed, it looks like it will be a fade actually being played as a support here. As Karma Diaz picks up the torture, he of course can play supports, but typically we do see him playing uh, something else. As I think I have the names swapped here. Yeah, let me go ahead and change this real quick, guys. N9 Gaming. I forgot to change this one. I hedged my bets because I didn't know which team was going to be on which side. And I said, well, I'm only going to have to change one. I wasn't feeling too lucky. And then go back to the other side over here. And Oloy. It's too far over. Center it out a little bit. Good enough. All right. We get into the game with a pause. Makes it nice and competitive here from the Hellborn team. Got to make sure that they are all set up. I, I saw earlier that uh, when Pew said ready... And the YOLO team said, Sec, gotta set up Skype. That uh, we might be in for a good one. <laughs> Hopefully they, they are quite well aware of how to work their Skype and get their team communication going. And uh, hopefully they don't get any, any uh, nerves or anything playing here with a stream. I know that uh, the first time that I played while I was being streamed in both uh, World of Warcraft and here in Han... It can get kind of nerve-wracking. you got to get a little bit used to that. So, kind of odd. But N9, I mean, I'm not quite sure how they're going to be laning this. Uh, I would expect that it's going to be a Suicide Wild Soul. He's already picked up a Ward of Sight. And then I would expect that uh, this Torture is probably going to be... I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. They, they might actually run a Suicide and then put Wild Soul in the jungle and then leave... Uh, torture Zephyr with a solo fade bottom. I mean, no, they have to run. A, I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know. Maybe a suicide fade or a long laid fade torture, and then solo Zephyr, solo, solo drunken master, jungle wild soul. But N9's lanes are, are, to be frank, they're crap. They're they're terrible, terrible lanes. Uh, almost any way you look at it. And so we're going to be uh, trying to figure out what they're going to do with those lanes momentarily. On the other side here for YOLO, uh, they have an extremely early game team here. Demented Shaman, Bubbles, Magmus, Myrmidon, Engineer, picking up three supports, a Suicide and an Initiator. Uh, Demented Shaman, of course, can be played as that solo semi-carry, even a hard carry. If you get good enough farm on that hero... Yeah, that entangle. Once you get that thing up to level three, it just it does so much work. The slow and the stun component on it are so nice to have. And demented shaman, you throw up that storm cloud, you get something like a soul's bulwark, and uh, maybe even a shield breaker, and you can just actually pound in auto attacks. So interested to see if that is what MA might go for. The Hellborn team still running the pawns here. Hopefully it's not anything too serious. Nothing on me on Bubbles. You would expect him to be going into the suicide lane. It's also a possibility that he will be running mid or a short lane. I think that their best possibility is actually going to be a Magmus Myrmidon Engineer tri-lane with a solo Demented Shaman short and then a Bubbles mid. Uh, Bubbles mid going up against whatever they have to, to really try to kill him, I think he's going to be okay unless that's a combination of Fade and Torture. Um, putting 
fade and torture together would kill almost everything. <laughs> so, uh, we are ready, so we're going to be getting back into this one, guys. Sorry about that pause, but evidently YOLO needed to work something out, and now we're going to get a little bit more information on what exactly the lanes are going to be. As Wild Soul actually sells back the ward that he had picked up. Um, hmm, interesting. So Fate is going to be running support as he does uh, stack a health potion here. It's laying on the ground. Um, ooh, actually picks up the second health potion. So they were initially planning on stacking some regen, um, but instead he's going to end up with two health potions and a, a Rune of the Blight. So Fade going to have a ton of regen here and not necessarily what he wanted. Instead, they're going to be running Wild Soul down here in the bottom lane with Torture, Drunken Master in the middle. So it's going to be a support fade being played by Brodex level 5. It's going to be supporting Zephyr. I have seen level 1 support fades work before. Um, I remember watching, I think in an in-house league game yesterday I actually saw one that uh, got some real real good success but we'll see in fact if uh, Druids is going to be able to make it work excuse me N9 they did just change their name this morning so still getting used to that one N9 gaming is their name now that they're no longer sponsored by the Druids organization nothing on me indeed going to be playing that suicide bubbles and it looks like they're going to be running a 2-2-1 strategy so Myrmidon going to be hanging out with Demented Shaman in the middle lane. And then Engineer with Magmus up top. I think I would have almost preferred to have seen those two lanes swapped. But uh, not quite sure. Belly here on the Zephyr is, uh, yeah, now he's going to be in the middle lane. And so they, in fact, are going to be sending Wild Soul up to the Suicide lane. And soloing short the... Or excuse me, not soloing short. They're going to put Drunken Master and Torture in the short lane. And uh, this is actually going to work out decently well for Druids. Wild Soul is not going to get a whole lot of farm until he can actually pull this creep wave back, which he's attempting to do right now as soon as he can get it into the river. Um, yeah, he should be in a pretty good position to do that now. Uh, the bear actually going to pull him all the way back here. And they're going to meet up with this creep wave. And so, yeah, looks like... Zintz will have a, a pretty good time farming that wave out and will gain some pretty good position as a result. Meets up with that creep wave and now Zintz able to farm that one out. Easy peasy. For those of you just joining us and wondering what the heck's going on, who the heck is Yoloi? Oloi, aka Yolo. They're going to be playing against N9, also known as Druids. Pew's team over here. And this is round two in the Sound Blaster Heroes League. Qualifier number two. Druids looking pretty strong so far. Now they're just uh, two more rounds. If they were to win this one, they would uh, be two more rounds to make it to the grand finals to fight for the invitation into the playoff event in uh, a couple of months, a month and a half away now. And, uh, of course, to be fighting for the chance at those ZC Z-Series sound cards and Rage wireless headsets. Bottom lane, Bubbles taking a lot of pressure right there from the lunge on Drunken Master. And Torture is saying, okay, I think you got this down there, Pew. Level 3 Drunken Master gets level 1 Bubbles, and we're pushing the lane, so I'm just going to go ahead and roam, and he will. He catches the chain reaction there on Demand Shaman. DS actually hits the big heal, activates the cape, and Zephyr might be in some trouble. Zephyr will, in fact, go down. A flow state on the Myrmidon, able to get the first blood. So N9, even with three players right there, just the pure power of that one as they do take down MA as well. Lunge almost coming out there from Drunken Master, not quite in range. But uh, a good job, good turnaround with the healing wave. Able to just nuke Zephyr down real bad and getting the first blood onto Fabelli is, is actually a pretty big deal here for the Druids team, the N9 team, they, they've fallen a little bit further behind than they would have wanted to early on, but the big thing for them is going to be this Drunken Master. As long as DM is going to be able to get farmed down here, then Druids should be just fine. Imp goes down at the hands of the Drunken Master as he uses that stagger forward and just putting out a lot of damage. We don't get to see Drunken Master too often, so I'm, I'm going to be watching this one a little bit more than uh, I might usually. 
Just want to see how he does. I suspect that he's going to be rushing for a chalice. I think that's the one of the more common builds on that hero is to get that chalice and get a few points into drink. And you're able to actually keep yourself uh, pretty high on HP, but no points into drink just yet. From Pew, choosing to skill out the stagger and the lunge rather than get the drink charges. Engineer in the jungle still trying to deal with this bear who's just consistently pulling the lane back to Zintz. He has gotten a total of seven creep kills by uh, via that tactic. Doesn't want to get anywhere near the top half of his lane. Instead, just kind of hanging out way, way back there and trying to find the farm wherever he can. And Shaman and Myrmidon, both level four. Out-leveling the Zephyr. I mean, Fabelli taking the first blood right there. Um, he, he's certainly fallen behind in terms of a little bit of levels. And down at 166 gold per minute. Zephyr is a hero that can certainly come back. But you also want to be able to get the early farm. And when you're double ranged against double melee, it can uh, it can be a very, very rough lane there for N9. Engineer is in position. Will they be going in? There's the uh, Magic Carp. Weedfield not going to happen. Burning Shadows is there. Uh, the Keg actually going to connect. And, well, Engineer is in some serious trouble. The Cape goes out. Uh, is there going to be any more stuns? Burning Shadows is up in two seconds. Will they be able to stop the Burning Shadows? The Weedfield goes out. Engineer going to be taking the fall, though. Actually gets the healing wave for now. Going to try to turn it around onto Fade. A few more auto attacks. Fade goes down. Nice counter kill. They're actually going to man up onto Zephyr right now. And will he be able to... There's the big Weedfield. And Fabelli goes down again. What the hell is going on? N9 falling behind in early hero kills and a lot of good roaming coming out here in the middle lane. Finding some kills. Fabelli down at 143 gold per minute and Demented Shaman way up there at 275. Tomp on his team. Myrmidon doing well as well. And Magnus free farming up in the top lane while Wild Soul is being relegated to these Predators. It looks like a, an early lead here for the YOLO team. And uh, that is something I did not expect coming into this one. As Fade drops the Burning Shadows. Chain Reaction comes out as well. Weedfield going to miss. Demented Shaman uses the Healing Wave. The Cape goes out now as well. And DS will be able to survive. Shell Surf going to try to pick off Torture. Not available though. And Bubbles needs to get back into that bottom lane. Wants to find his experience. But now they have Fabelli actually farming bottom. Along with Drunken Master. And DM will be TPing into this middle lane. I think Drunken Master will stand a lot better of a chance against this uh, Myrmidon DS with the Roaming Engineer. Speaking of DS, there's the Burning Shadows with the Hasted Fade. Chain Reactions and DS goes down. The Weed Field just not even remotely close. A uh, couple of them have been nice. A couple of them not so much here from Flow State. Trying to help his good buddy M.A. out. Do you Han going to make his way back up to try to... Help out Bunzel. Maybe find some farm up there as Zephyr's manning up onto Bubbles. But Bubbles just says, wait, you're not that strong at all. Just hits his health potion and will continue in this lane. No regen on Fabelli, and Fabelli needs to be careful. As there is a TP coming in. Fade with boots. Might be looking to set up something on Bubbles. But with that kelp field, Bubbles might be able to turn it around and maybe even kill Zephyr. As in the middle lane, Drunken Master manning up on the Demented Shaman, but wants nothing about that healing wave. There's another pause, unfortunately, is going out. Hopefully the Hellborn team gets whatever it is, the problem resolved here very, very soon. Let's take a look at some of the creep scores now. Bunzel up in this top lane, completely unimpeded, is at 36 and 16. Of course, some of the creep waves have been stopped back here, so some of the creeps might have been denied. Uh, a total of one deny up right now, but I'm sure some of them did die without getting denied. So Magma's doing relatively well up there, currently at 278 gold per minute, top on his team. Uh, Pew in the bottom lane, though, has done pretty well for himself as well. Now rotating to the mid, but 37 and 12 with a kill on that Demented Shaman. Looking good for Pew. Torture still just kind of doing a support thing and Fade as well, but Fabelli, I mean, this is something to talk about. 20 and 10 on Zephyr, even with his two deaths and being forced out of his lane, he, he's still CSing pretty well. And Zlintz, 
doing well for himself as well. Able to get up to 215 gold per minute, 17 and 1 CS. And some of those are ancients. As he's starting to work on this Predator stack, he'll be able to increase that certainly. Dimitri Shaman at 26 and 8. Bubbles at 19 and 4. And that's your creep score. Roundup is another weed field just goes out and completely whiffs. Take a look at the ping. Flow state at 272 MS. As uh, let's hit GI here. US West. Um, wait, hold on a second. Oh, here, oh. Sorry. Okay, well, the Australians are pinging really, really hard to a U.S. West server. Um, really high, actually. And so that's just a little bit interesting. Sorry, I just wanted to get confirmation of what was, what was going on there. So, yeah, Australia versus Europe, that's that's complete opposite sides of the world. Never going to have a real good ping match up there. As Bubbles, he's uh, being forced to back off just a bit. Fade is in position, has that level 3 Burning Shadows available. That's a 2.2 seconds done? Yeah, 2.2. So it keeps Bubbles in position for quite some time. And a level 6 Zephyr, oh, they're going to go in right here. Uh, there's the kelp field onto Zephyr. The uh, Shell Surf not going to be able to be used just yet. And we'll have to back up. Engineer not quite able to get any there for any kills either. And in the end, both teams just playing highly defensive. Don't want to have to give up any kills. Back into the middle lane. Demented Shaman and Myrmidon still just hanging out. Torture has picked up some Striders while Demented Shaman has finished up his Steam Boots. And... Uh, not farming too well anymore now that Pew has actually moved into this lane down to 228 gold per minute. But Magnus up in the top lane farming very well. 2300 gold banked up. Enough to pick up his portal key should he choose to do that. I would like to see him complete some boots and maybe get a mana item. Whether that's a talisman of the exile, grave locket, or ring of sorcery. Before he looks to pick up that portal key. Um, the thing about that is though, you need to be- Oh, there's the magic carp actually, and Drunken Master activates the ult. The weed field gonna connect with Torture this time. Kent goes out. Are they gonna be able to finish off Torture? A big burning shadow. Torque goes down, but so does Myrmidon. Engineer gonna be shortly there to follow as the reflection opening back onto Demented Shaman. There's the lunge, and DS now in some trouble. Stagger comes in. One more auto attack will finish him off. Drunken Master hits that chalice to stagger up in one second, and DS just manning up. Maybe looking to get killed by Ancients? No, not gonna happen. Shell Surf goes out there, but a huge fight for the Druids. N9 team, excuse me. I'm gonna get used to that eventually, I swear. They're now up 6-4 to four in hero kills and starting to be right back on track. 263 gold per minute on Zephyr in the bottom lane. Going to be looking for a kill on Engineer actually right here. Um, not going for the Gust and he had the Typhoon available. I guess he just didn't want to get trapped behind the tower with TP support coming in. Something along those lines. But um, interesting stuff going on thus far. Druids taking the experience advantage back once more. As Engineer is definitely in some trouble there. There goes the turret though, and there's no Gust available. Engineer will be able to escape from this for now, and indeed he does. Is in the middle lane. Drunken Master taking some pressure. Carp comes out. No weed field available from Bubbles. And Torture will just be able to back up. Kelpfield. Kelpfield, Weedfield, Waveform. Man, I cannot keep those names straight at all. As uh, Demented Shaman is going in right there. Burning Shadows onto him. Uh, there's the Kelp Field, though. Demented Shaman able to survive for now. Drunken Master to troll. There's the Portal Key. Three man Lava Surge. Fade, the only one left alive there. And she's going to be in some trouble. Burning Shadows back out onto three players once again. Activates her reflection back into the Weed Field. Oh, and he goes down. YOLO, YOLO, YOLO. They take three kills in the middle lane. And they're back up and experiencing gold once more. The Hero Kill advantage in their favor. But Zephyr in the bottom lane starting to recover, and that's what they've got to be worried about. So Magma's showing me I'm wrong right there, saying I don't need anything but a portal key. And will Zephyr be taking a lot of pressure here? No vision from Druid, so Zephyr might not be aware that he's being stalked. Uh, the Magmus only has a 
uh, Lava Surge. Doesn't have enough mana for a Portal Key plus Lava Surge. And so it's a little bit odd that all of the Hellborn team is in fact down here. So they're not going to be able to run down that Zephyr without a Blink Lava Surge from Magmus. So Pew, what's his build like? He still has no drink. This is very odd to me. Four points in lunch, four points in stagger, and I don't claim to be the most knowledgeable guy about Drunken Master, the best Drunken Master player, but I I, I think that should be have points in it as do you, Han. It's gonna go down right here. Drops the turret, the burning shadows is there. Chain reaction, agonizing bonds, and Karma Diaz brings home the kill on torture. Karma Diaz on tort, I mean he's been playing that supporting role. Um, which he does in the in-house leagues a lot of the times, but uh, normally does play initiator-type heroes. Seen him play Bubbles, or excuse me, not Bubbles, uh, Pebbles a lot. As the bottom tower, TPs are coming in. There's the Glyph of Fortification, and uh, Chain Reaction onto Magmus. He's going to get stunned in the back right here. Lava Surge onto Zephyr. The Weed Field connects as well, and Zephyr's in some serious trouble. Going to get slowed by the turret, and down goes Fabelli. Fabelli gets the kill with the Gusto onto Engineer, and Magmus looking for another Lava Surge right now onto Torture. Auto Attack's coming out as Tort's trying to juke. He's just wasting time, though. Shell Surf comes in, and Auto Attack from Bunzel. Serial killer streak on him and N9 still down in gold and now down 2,500 experience. They need to get everybody in position together. But I did just see a Sword of the High actually picked up on Boo Boo Bear. So looking for a very, very early mock of brilliance as Wild Soul just permanently roaming on that uh, ancient snack. N9 needs to make something happen before they let this game slip through their fingers. As I mentioned at the beginning of this cast, N9 is probably the favored team to take this um we're, we're in the round of 16 right now going into round of eight tomorrow i would definitely say that n9 is the team to take this qualifier as uh Fabelli's is actually in deep here once again and lava surge available for magmus and doesn't want to dive though knows that he's low on mana knows that uh tp support might be available so, Druids, they really do need to play their hardest in this game. They almost gave this game up to forfeit, actually, as Torture does miss the stun right there. And they will have to back on up. Magmus goes in. Lava Surge onto Torture. No follow-up, though. And there's the uh, lunge pushing Magmus backwards. He's still okay, though. Keg not going to connect just yet. And Pew trying to run down Magmus. But no, Mag does just tap that Lava Surge, and he will be able to just get on out of there. So Druids, they really, really don't want to go out of this qualifier early. They they know this is probably their best shot to easily get in there and win those five Z-Series uh, sound cards. That's a big deal. Bubbles has uh, taken some damage down there. Fabelli is finally able to push down the tower in the bottom lane and up to 312 gold per minute. Still behind Magmus, but uh, Wild Soul recovering very nicely at 300 gold per minute himself and now only... About uh, a minute, maybe about 30 seconds away from finishing up his Mock of Brilliance. In fact, he's got the gold for it right about now. One more auto attack and he's got it. So that'll be flown out to him momentarily in a 15 minute Mock of Brilliance for Wild Soul. Well, that is, that is very, very nice indeed. One thing that I have to say about this Yolo team, they've gotten some great ganks. They're probably sticking together a little bit too much. There's experience and gold to be had in both of these other lanes, and instead you have five of them uh, in the middle lane. They're not even pushing. They're they're kind of pushing, but not really. As uh, Burning Shadows comes in, catches Myrmidon. Chain Reaction going to follow up. The Healing Wave is there, though, and uh, in comes the Stagger. Magmus channeling up the Eruption. He's going to be able to get in there. Lava Surge onto Torture. Going to be able to catch Zephyr as well. He let Drunken Master escape, though. Bad decision there from Bunzel. And... Instead, uh, Engineer going to be going down. Magmus has availability of one more Lava Surge. Needs to get back in there. There's the Kelp Field. Drunken Master goes down. Lava Surge onto Zephyr. Going to be able to catch him as well. Mer we feel from Myrmidon. And down goes four players from the uh, Z9 team. Wild Soul able to take down the tower in the top lane. To give them a gold advantage still. But four deaths there in the middle lane. And there goes the gold advantage. Experience advantage is still there. And... Well, <laughs> YOLO, they're, they're starting to maybe take a, a larger advantage than you would expect in this game as Arcanas are starting to be picked up by Magnus. I mean, Bunzel farming close to 400 gold per minute. Um, interesting. <laughs> 
And Nine needs to make something happen here. His Pew's finally started to level drink. He needs those drink charges very, very bad. And like I said, I don't claim to be the, the most knowledgeable guy in Drunken Master, but really feel like uh, you need drink on that hero. As uh, Demented Shaman, what does he have? Let's take a look. He, he's gone with the power supply and the ring of the teacher as I heard a reflection go off right there. Bubbles might be in some trouble. Can it get opened on? There's the reflection dot. Burning Shadows comes in. Magmus only gets one in the lava surge though. Bubbles uses the shell surf. Will be able to escape for now. And Magmus not in any trouble either. So in the end, Hellborn able to get out of there with their lives. If he had gotten the two-man lava surge right there, I think they might have been able to kill Fate. Um, but instead only got one. So that's a little bit unfortunate for the Hellborn team. And both those players will have to back on up. Bubbles to go regen and Magmus to search for another target. Perhaps in the middle lane. Instead does run into Torture. And if he channeled up his ultimate, would easily be able to get the kill onto Torture. But not looking for that one just yet. So guys, if you've not heard of YOLO before, like I have not... Maybe they're a, a team to look out for. A new Australian team, maybe. As Lava Surge does go out right there. The Weed Field going to connect. Uh, Shell Surf Song of the Sea. The Healing Wave goes out and the Kelp Field finishes him off. YOLO gets another kill. Nothing on me. Gets that one. Engineer using a nice keg right there. Will be able to escape for now. Striding Torture though. Chain Reaction. The Agonizing Bonds and the Auto Attacks. The Lunge. Uh, no, Auto Attacks will do it. Karma Diaz picks up that kill. Trading the Torture. Excuse me, trading the Engineer for a kill onto the Zephyr, though. Uh, not ideal, but certainly something they're willing to take. Something that they need to worry about, though, is this bear. Boo Boo now up at 370 gold per minute is the top in the game. He's been involved in nothing, hasn't died, hasn't been involved in any kills. As, uh, well, Magnus might be looking to come in here once more and try to get something set up. Burning Shadows goes out, does whiff. Bottom tower goes down in favor of the Legion team. Going to be able to take out the bear and activate the uh, glyph in time. Will they be able to get the deny as the N9 team does choose to back up, splitting up even. Want to make sure that they don't give up too many kills here. And uh, should easily be able to get the deny on this tower. And great job there from the YOLO squad, able to get the deny. And will they be able to even pick off this wild soul? They watched him walk up into the jungle right past that Ward of Revelation. Uh, if they could get a pick on this Wild Soul, it would be absolutely gigantic. But they're not moving in there just yet. Moving kind of toward the top rune. And they might be able to... As Magmus actually comes over here to take the illusion, he's going to spot the Wild Soul coming down the river. Oh, Wild Soul going back up into the jungle. And uh, as a result, not going to be walking by just yet. So otherwise, would have very likely gotten a kill. They're instead going to look at Drunken Master. They need to be careful as uh, there is a tower here for them to port to. But can they burst him down fast enough? Pew perhaps in some trouble. And here it comes. Lava Surge goes in. There's the keg as well. The Weed Field uh, going to be going out. And Pew does not get hit by the Weed Field. Does go down though. Burning Shadow on four players right there. Cole, there's the Agonizing Boss. Chain Reaction hitting three. Myrmidon able to get out of there. Eruption being channeled up by Magmus. He's going to get back in there. Finds the Fade. And Fade going to be taking a lot of damage. Not going to be going down though. And Fade turns it around with the Burning Shadows. Magmus now the one going to be going down. Bunzel takes the fall. And a hat trick for Fabelli. So that is what the N9 team needed. Good response with their TPs, able to react to an overextension from the Hellborn team. And uh, that just got them back into the game with their superior carries late game in the Drunken Master, the Wild Soul, and the Zephyr. Uh, they should definitely be back in the driver's seat. And uh, that's what really, th those are the kinds of things that you really see. Um, and you're like, uh, well, I mean, these are guys, or they're not super practiced together. They're not... Uh, super competitive they're not ultra high skilled it, it's things like that where they just seem to overextend just a little bit too far as bubbles is taking a lot of pressure up here in the top lane they're going to be looking for a kill on wild soul keg not going to connect though kelfield is available if bubbles wants to get back in that but no not going to be going for that one just yet yet just yet support fade Level 9, doing her thing. Karma Diaz, level 8 on his torture. On the other side, the uh, level 7 engineer, just doing most of the warding. While Myrmidon's gotten uh, involvement in a couple more kills. And 3 0 and 6, so, excuse me, 6 2 and 5, doing a very good job there for Myrmidon up at 194 gold per minute. And Bubbles, 6 3 0 and 6 
He's done very, very well for himself. One more time, though, I want to reiterate, Yolo, if they, if they were doing this well and not grouping up so much, if they had somebody up there farming this lane and farming this lane a little bit, just pushing those out and then starting to gank on the other side, as Lava Surge goes out onto Pew and Shell Surf Song of the Seas there as well. Uh, Zephyr in the middle of it, though. There goes the Typhoon. Bubbles going to have to drop that Kelp Field. Does drop the Kelp Field. Magmus in trouble in the back, though, and uh, Engineer already dying for Belly in the front lines using those... Cyclones, Magma starting to channel up the eruption. Will blink back in. Use the lava surge. Gonna be able to catch for Belly. For Belly goes down. We feel on the Drunken Master. Drunken Master goes down. Burning Shadows Cull. Magma's gonna take the fall. Karma Diaz activates the power supply. We'll be able to survive for now. Magic Carp catches up to him though. And Wild Soul, he's the only one left up in the front lines. Lands the root though. And the bear gonna be able to take down Bubbles perhaps. Bubbles in some serious trouble as Fade actually gets the kill. And that was the genocide for the N9 team. Engineer. Oh no, that's, oh no, that's so unfortunate. The uh, bear bug, this is a known bug from the game. I, it hasn't been fixed, unfortunately, for a, a very long time now. Um, but it, it can be very, very annoying when you can't see the bear. And uh, <laughs> you saying maybe your tunnel vision is the problem, as uh, he does get focused down pretty hard. And uh, Boo Boo and Wild Soul just clean up a triple stack there like it ain't no thing. Even looking for a snack here. Not going to actually wait for the stack. Instead just kills it. But uh, almost a good fight there for YOLO. Unfortunately, Wild Soul and Fade just prove a little bit too much. Fade got three levels from that fight. And uh, looked very, very good as a result. Carmadius continuing to stride around, getting the ward thing done. Counter warden and warding wherever he does see fit. Well, Zephyr is flying around deep on the enemy side of the map, looking for farm wherever he can find it. We saw Magma start to work on a Hellflower with the Arcanas a little while ago and uh, hasn't been able to make much progress. He's uh, about 100 gold away from his next his next arcana if he should choose to continue working on that or maybe he's going for his spell shards would be very close to being able to pick up spell shards level two um i honestly think that that would not be the worst choice they have no late game really to speak of this Venet shaman's going for a hellflower not going to be going for a super carry build instead of just like a, a ganker semi carry as a, a level 12 fade will engage on an engineer there's the reflection opening burning shadows cull and engineer with one last auto attack does go down Defensive keg will connect, but not until after he had already bit the dust. So Brodex level 5 doing a great job on that support fade. 5, 3, and 12. Involvement in 17 out of the 20 kills of his team. She's done a fantastic job. Actually starting from babysitting a Zephyr in the middle lane to be getting that big. Very, very well done indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly feel like a... Spell Shards would not be a bad idea here. As Rebelli is uh, going to take a Lava Surge. The Weed Field goes out as well. But here comes the reinforcements. Shell Surf goes in. Song of the Sea. A bad engagement there from Bubbles. He's going to take some pressure. The uh, ultimate being charged up from Magmus. Teleports back in. Going to be able to do a lot of damage. And Fabelli takes another stun right there. Back into the uh, energy field. And Fabelli will go down. Kelp Field on the Torture as well. Where's the Magic Carp? Manning up onto Myrmidon. As the Bear just disintegrates him. Engineer going to be in some trouble as well. The energy field not gonna save him this time he's still in there and not gonna die mock of brilliance and impalement somehow left him alive pew says eh, i don't know if he's still in there or not but yeah he is once again preventing the genocide he died in the last fight but resurrected so fast his team didn't get the geno this time n9 does not even care they say what's up rax 26 minutes in there 14,000 gold 12,000 experience up and uh, Yolo starting to fall apart. I mean, Engineer, what is he doing? Uh, looking for the regen, actually. And that was a very timely regen. But the melee racks, they are going to be going down. There's the Lava Surge onto Drunken Master. The racks fall. The Healing Wave in. Demented Shaman in some trouble. Burning Shadows onto two right there. Magmus might be in some trouble as well. Now, Demented Shaman going to be the only casualty. Engineer, perhaps, looking for a flank. His energy field is available in another 15 seconds. 
but do they really have the uh, available spells, the available damage? As Karma Diaz does go down there, Magnus gonna pay for it as he goes down in turn. Fade gonna be able to pick up that kill, and um, Hermandon actually just gets blown up by the bear. Bear gonna turn his attention toward Engineer. Kelpfield gonna go down, but Engineer goes down as well. The, the energy field going to be able to stop absolutely nothing as Bubbles takes the fall, and going to be able to get Fade first, and yeah, Bubbles will fall, but got a kill on Fade, and that is the genocide. So N9 looks like they're gonna be taking this best of one series very, very uh, soon here. Shieldbreaker level three finished up on Pew, and uh, he's looking pretty good in that respect. The bear just, with the demonic breastplate, it's so strong, able to take down those towers so fast, has so much tanking potential, and uh, GG Well Plains are coming out, and looks like YOLO, the Australian players, are gonna be giving this one up at 28 minutes in. So we'll see, I mean, the tower goes down mid, but Rote can see not passing just yet. Down 22,000 gold and 17,000 experience. There's the concede once more. And there it passes. So, N9, they were looking kind of sketchy at the beginning. But in the end, their resilience was able to pay off. And they were able to take the game. So, very well done to them. They're going to be moving on to play in the round of eight tomorrow in the Sound Blaster Heroes League. Try to make their way to Friday's grand finals to actually see if they can uh, bring home the five Z-Series sound cards courtesy of Sound Blaster and the invitation into the playoffs. If you have not heard, by the way, Trademark Esports was the second team invited. And you can check out the press release over at Sevo.com or on the Han Competitive forums where I uh, posted links to that. So guys, make sure to check that out. And of course, one more big thank you for actually showing up and watching the Sound Blaster Heroes League today. No, not super, super high-level teams as we're still in the early stages of those qualifiers. I assure you, in future qualifiers, we're going to be having a lot more of these top teams that are looking to qualify. But guys, thank you very much for being here. And of course, a huge shout-out to Sound Blaster for putting on the Sound Blaster Heroes League. Also to co-sponsors, Heroes of New Earth and Newegg. Without their support, the Sound Blaster Heroes League would not be possible. So a big shout out to them. Make sure to head over to Facebook.com slash Sound Blaster and Twitter at Sound Blaster for more information and to follow. Let them know how much that you appreciate their involvement in the Heroes of New Earth competitive scene. Let them know you want to see more. And I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige. So once again, Facebook.com slash Sound Blaster and Twitter at Sound Blaster. Make sure to follow, like, leave a comment, do something. Let them know that you love what they're doing here. And guys, that is going to be it for the coverage today. I've actually got one more thing for you, one more time. Guys? Let's watch it. You love this commercial and so do I. Guys, I'm pulling aggro. Heal, heal, we got this, we got this! <gasps> no! Stop beating your hardware. Head to Newegg.com for an upgrade. And for more tech videos, check out our Newegg YouTube channel. So there you go. Newegg, take it from a geek. Visit Newegg.com. Get all of your hardware. I know that's where I order the majority of my stuff from. They are very good about delivering it on time. And uh, very good prices as well. So that's my personal testimonial. Guys, thanks again for being here. I do appreciate that. But that is going to do it. For our coverage today, we'll be back tomorrow with more Sound Blaster Heroes League, perhaps more Scrimcast, more Haunt Tour Gold, maybe even some in-house league. We'll have to see, guys. So thank you one more time, and make sure to give a big shout-out to Complexity Gaming at ComplexityGaming.com for allowing Colcast to happen. So, guys, thanks. We'll catch you next time.